So it's been a, over 10 days since I uploaded a video. So let's make a video. But first, let's clean this room. This is GeoDroid John, and this is for my 3D printing people. Let's go. And done. Okay, we're done. Now let's get to the video. Do you have a CR10 or any other printer with a Wobbly Z or some other Wobbly axis on it, like the Tronc CXY? The CR10 is infamous for having the Wobbly Z axis, and I've gone ahead and I've taken care of it in this video. So stay tuned and you'll see how I, exactly how I adjusted it, added this, and I got the perfect first layer height. And this is a very good machine. It does lots of really great prints consistently. But recently I was commissioned to do a new part and I was having a heck of a time trying to get it to stick to the bed here. So I like printing on the glass and this is kind of like a new PLA filament for me. It's really glossy. And I, like, I wanted the, the nice shine on the back, but unfortunately I, I was having a really hard time getting it to stick. So. It made me re reassess whether I would wanted to take the play out of this, this uh, x-axis. You can see CR10s are known for this. They don't have a second motor on the other side. So they, they flop around a little bit. And this reminds me a lot of the Tronxy. And it has a similar problem, but I solved it with these prints. And I will link in the description below and I will put the Thingiverse builder right here. Now what these are, these are axis tighteners and they fit over here right inside that frame so that they actually pull somehow with the magic of engineering, they somehow do it better than the builders did. So I'm gonna try to install these and see if I can remove this play and hopefully it'll make my machine a little bit more tighter and make that first layer a little bit easier because you can imagine when you're trying to level your bed and you, this side's good, this side's good, and then you come over here, just a little bit of wiggle room and the print bed could be a little bit messed up. Now, it was only messing up in the way that when I went, went to print, it would be so dug in that it would be impossible to remove it without destroying the tape this time. I've never had this problem before these last few days. So maybe it's the temperature, maybe it's the moisture, you don't really know. But what I do want to what I do know is that making your machine more precise by making taking out any variables will definitely help it out in the long run. So I'm going to try this blind. I have never done this before on this machine. So you're going to work with me and you're going to see the results whether I actually am successful at this modification or if I will fail spectacularly like I normally do. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I have the end of the X-arm disassembled and it basically has this plate. Uh, this You can just take all this off with T-slot nuts. So that's actually really easy to take off. The nuts are still inside the, uh, the rail there. I was really surprised it wasn't right there. Um, so I removed the parts. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all those with this. I'm gonna place it right inside there. I don't know if it will even fit. It might not even actually fit. So this might be a failed experiment right away. Oh no. Okay, let's check, check, take a look and see what we can do. Okay, so just a few minutes of actually just doing this, I removed the, the bracket and it is in fact too small. This one will not match up. I can redesign this file. I can make some adjustments. Also, the screw that attaches it into the X-axis arm is blocked, so I can redesign that right as well. But right now, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drill through that. I'm gonna leave one wheel off and I'm gonna try to mount it in like this so and see if just the two wheels will work. I noticed that as long as two wheels are touching and they're tight, it might actually work just fine. So I'm gonna drill that out. I'm gonna reinstall this and see if we can remove that, that, that play from the X arm.
All right, if you stuck with me all the way through this, you're interested to see how this works out for the first time. It is installed. I had to break it off because I just didn't have any drill bits on hand. I have them out in the woodworking garage. I had to break it off. So I broke off the bottom piece and then I reinstalled that third wheel. And it actually it's kind of unique how it goes together. And I noticed when I was trying to install it, it did not want to go back in. So I'm curious to understand, maybe somebody out there in the comments can explain to me how just this one spacer here that basically does what this does, but somehow the tension between these two pulleys, I don't know if it changes, does it bow it a little bit in one direction and makes it tight? Cause now look, that is significantly tighter. Look, you can't, I'm not seeing the play I saw before in that X arm and it does move up and down smoothly. I did just the, the bracket by itself. So let's fire up the CR10. We're looking for binding. While this is going up, you might notice that I actually had to remove the super stylish, super amazing orange things that they put inside there to make it look good. I really don't care about that. Looks don't matter to me as far as that. You can ask anyone. I have some ugly AF printers, but it seems to be going up very good. I don't see any play in that access arm anymore. So I'm gonna go all the way up and just look for any problems. And in an upcoming video, I'm gonna talk about the five things I love about this CR10 and five things I do not like about it. It's gonna be hard to find five things I don't like about it, but we'll try. So that is solid as a rock. You can see me putting some serious movement on there. That it looks pretty good. It's got a good lead screw, so you can push it straight down too. I don't know if it'll go up. Yeah, it goes up too. Quite a bit of force. Okay, so it rolls smoothly. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retape the bed. Actually, I'm gonna do no glass. I'm gonna do it just on glass, because that's what, ideally what I wanna do. I'm gonna remove all the tape. I'm gonna retram the bed with a sheet of paper. And I'm gonna try to get that perfect first level on this very glossy, on the glass print bed and see if we can get a good uh, first print. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and hyperlapse. Hey, this is John from the editing bay after I shot all of this footage. I just wanna tell you guys, I had a whole section in here about tramming the actual print bed. I'm gonna cut that all out. If you're interested in learning how to tram your bed using a piece of paper and all those steps, other people have covered that. But if you're interested, I'm gonna link a unlisted video in the, in the description below so that we can skip over all that and we can just get to the testing of this so we can see how it actually looks once it's all leveled out. And nope, looks like I was completely wrong. It started off really good, but the drag of the nozzle actually caused it to miss a uh, print. So I think this is because I was using some older settings where it was jamming down so hard, I actually increased the first layer height to like 120. So I'm gonna go back into the G-code settings and I'm gonna change this back to like 90 because you want your first layer height to be a little bit lower than your actual layer height of the rest of the print. And this one's at 0.2. So I'm gonna go bring it down to 90 instead of 120 and maybe we'll finally get that first good print. So it's gonna go ahead and get started. And I set the first layer height at 90% of uh, 2.20. So it should be you know 1.8 first layer height. And on my, you can't see it on my LCD, but yes, it actually displays 0.1. The la previous G code setting I had it at is 150. That's how much I was trying to overcompensate for the misaligned you know, X arm and you know not having to tr properly trammed out bed. I increased the first extrusion width to 120 instead of 150 as previously in my last G code. So it looks like it's going down pretty thin and it, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna put this on time-lapse and then I will see what happens. So I'm gonna stop the print right here. I'm gonna show you uh, how close we are to the desired product. You can see how easily this peels off. It comes right off. And that's why I wanna print on glass because it does when it prints off well, it looks really good. Get a chance to focus. Get a chance. Look at that. I really like glossy. Okay, now let's take a look, closer look at the layers. 
it looks pretty good. I did notice the nozzle was dragging through and um, you, can, you can hear it. You can just hear the vibration, the, the little rub. And I, what, what I really want to do is try to get it so dialed in that it just, it's smooth and that each layer doesn't run across each other. So this is printed at 0 0.90 first layer height. I'm going to go ahead and slice a new G code. I'm going to try it at point, or at 95% first layer height and see how that works. Okay, it's laying down the first layer and we'll see how it looks. It does not look as bad as the first one where it was so smushed down you could barely see the line. Don't hear any grinding yet, but it's still early on in the first layer. Uh, if, it get, if it gets to the point where it just pops off, I might not. I might want to reduce the layer width. So instead of 120, I bring it down to like 100 or something like that. But right now, we'll see how the first few layers look, and we'll check back in. So the second layer is starting to go down. And it still sounds like it's rumbling through that first layer a little bit but not as bad as the first time. So I could sit here all day and play with the new settings and everything, but I think I'm just gonna experiment with that off camera. So let's jump to the conclusion here. Okay, so to wrap up this video, you can modify your 3D printers to be a little bit better. Manufacturers, maybe they just wanna make a machine that sells a lot of units and then it's out the door. It's up to us as a community to modify these machines, keep them running and make your money go further per dollar than it would without you know any customer support so practice working with your 3d printer and getting it up and running and don't be afraid to modify it a little bit i kind of broke my machine here and there and you know it's just part of the process so get in there hack away at your stuff make your, your 3d printer a, an awesome machine because it is an awesome machine and you want to be able to make all the stuff you can design and don't settle for mediocre prints try to really focus in all the hard work you do up front will feel worth it in the end because I know how hard it is to have a crappy 3D printer and work on it and work on it and work on it and feel like you're not doing anything but work on your 3D printer, which is not what you bought one for. You bought one so you can make stuff. So I promise you, if you have a crappy 3D printer, do not give up on it. There's always a way to fix it. You can always fix it with your two hands and your mind and the support of the community, you can fix your 3D printers and keep them up and running instead of having to buy one through affiliate links through everybody else. So that's all I got today, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this probably very long video. Uh, please subscribe if you're new because I'm gonna be putting out some good content and I wanna make sure that you guys get the newest information. Hit that bell icon because I'm gonna put out less videos but more thoroughly researched and documented videos so it will be worth your time if you don't have time for these videos throw them in a watch list and then watch them later okay guys thank you so much i appreciate your time and have a great night bye